Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. It's got to be a late one, but I appreciate everybody uh, making breaks happen all day today. Here's 2020, Panini Donner's Optic Football 6 box, half case, pick your team number 9 from a fresh case. All card ship, and uh, we'll do that break credit randomizer at the end of the break along with a quick autograph recap. If I forget that recap, which, <laughs> which I tend to do, um, I'll try to remember to put it in a separate video or something like that. If not, I apologize. All right, let's pop this open. Let's get this going here. All right, let's see which side we're gonna do here. One, two, three for the. I'm gonna choose a die. One, two, three for the left side. Four, five, six for the right side. And it's two, left side. So this side, we will save four. What is this? This is pick your team nine. So this will be for the next pick your team. I know that doesn't quite look like PYT, but trust me, pick your team right here. Um, this is the last... Donner's Optic Football that we have. I think I saw more Contenders cases in the back, but this is the last football. All right, let's go. All right, what, what, what do you have for me, Robert? Robert's got a bit of a hot take. Ooh, next season, Leonard Fournette in the backfield for the Chargers. What's your, uh, I, th I think that's not a bad call. What's your reasoning? For that, what is your thought process there? Because Leonard Fournette, a free agent, maybe with Ronald Jones, but the Buccaneers don't really necessarily need a Leonard Fournette. Maybe give Austin Eckler a little bit of rest. Josh Kelly didn't really work out for the Chargers last year, at least his first year. But Josh Kelly could still be a good third string running back. We'll put Leonard Fournette up there. Austin Eckler could still be in there for pass catching downs, right? Maybe it works. Maybe that makes sense. Put less pressure on Justin Herbert. You don't want, I mean, he's good, but you know, maybe you don't necessarily want a young quarterback throwing like 50 times a game. New coaching staff. Do they have the money? I don't know what the Chargers' money situation is. And they have the cap space, Robert is saying. Could be pretty interesting. Well, if Sean Jaspi is listening, he's a big Chargers fan. I wonder what he thinks about that. Wait for uh wow they got twenty five to twenty eight million dollars open. Well, the next what what when does the league calendar reset where all the deals are official, right? Like the Carson Wentz deal isn't official until like the March mid March somewhere. So there's actually going to be I feel like a lot of players being released too to open up cap space. So over the next few weeks there's going to be a lot of release news trades that are squared away i mean there's going to be a lot of a lot of crazy things happening i think the t higgins blue to 179 for the Bengals for sean jeff okuda hollow going to jarrell and the lions there's elite series rookies joe burrow let's try to find a nice rated rookie hollow that's what we want to see 17th of march there you go i'm just talking about austin eckler denzel mims to 199 cd lamb rated rookie tom brady super bowl champ Buccaneers, Coppola with that one. C.D. Lamb rated rookie for Chris and the Cowboys. Denzel Mims, Jets. That'll be for Coppola as well. Jalen Hurts, nice Jalen Hurts. What, 22 out of 29? Aqua? Eagles, Matthew Shearer. So I guess without Carson Wentz, 
for now, this is QB1. Although I've heard rumblings that they may try to... Uh, they might draft a quarterback or bring someone in for... Because they think that Jalen Hurts needs to marinate a little bit more. So there might be a little bit of quarterback competition as possible. There's Devontae Adams to 299. And we got a Derek Carr, 25. Nice, that looks pretty sharp. That goes to John and my Raiders. Right, TV deal getting giving just over five million more cast space, and helps a little bit too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did hear that. Well, I'll... yes and no. I think Robert, I I want to say that the cap was close to two hundred million, like two or three years ago. So it went backwards to 170 something and then cap went back up to 180 something but still below what the cap was a few years ago. But I mean that's kind of splitting hairs. I think NFL is doing just fine. There's Jonathan Taylor, Colts autograph, Kurt, Derrick Henry to 35. Two other rookies. And that's box 1. That Derek Henry line green goes to Sean Maddock as well. All right, next box. Yeah, the NFL is is king. I don't know. Pandemic ratings are kind of. Kind of weird. I don't think. I think it'll be. I don't think. I don't think it'll be until many years after where, where we'll really kind of unpack the impact of 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 cord cutting, of broadcasts, of COVID, of how much not being able to go to live sports affects watching of live sports. Or there's so much content now. You know, everyone was everyone was talking about how the NBA ratings were down. But then, but then they were playing in the middle of the summer in a weird situation, competing against sports they normally don't compete against. Ratings are back up for, for the NBA. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, this, this pack is going to be the one that has like the gold vinyl inside, right? No, we're fine. Yeah, me too. The Deshaun... I'll be so bummed, Robert, and, and I'm a I have no dog in the fight, right? The 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 Deshaun Watson thing. I don't think I don't think he's going to my Raiders. I don't think the Raiders are even are they don't have the money, they don't have the the assets. And I think their offense was actually okay, you know. It was actually the okay spot. Their defense that was horrible, so unless Deshaun Watson can play can uh can rush the passer effectively. <laughs> Oh, there is. So I have no dog in the fight, but I want to see something happen. You know, and it would be it'd be good to see Deshaun Watson. You know, kind of maybe better be in a better situation. Unfortunately, that's just not happening in Houston. So if you're Houston, tear off the bandaid, move Deshaun Watson. Let's see if Deshaun Watson can get into a better spot. Broncos maybe. Someone mentioned that earlier today. There's Kenneth Murray to 299. JJ Watt. Someone said someone looked at Vegas odds and someone said that the Browns were actually in the lead for JJ Watt, which I thought was interesting. It was Terry McLaurin and Justin Jefferson. One of the two great Justin rookies from last year. There's Edelman to 125. Terry McLaurin for Mark, and Justin Jefferson rated rookie for Steve Locke. You know, I that Miami. I mean, I I feel like Tua should deserve a a couple years or so, but but that's in a that's in a market where there's Tyler Boyd, 
for 25. This, these black parallels look really cool. But that's, that's in, an, in a market where Deshaun Watson isn't available. But if Deshaun Watson's available, and look how good, now Joe Burrow rated rookie, look how good the Dolphins looked with that sort of Tua, Ryan Fitzpatrick sort of thing. And their defense is excellent. You know, so Miami might be one of those, and the Niners, I think, might be one of those few teams where they're a quarterback away. There's 23 out of 25. Nice Jordan Love autograph. Packers, Sean Maddock. But yeah, Niners, exactly. Watson is now. So in a market where Watson is available, yeah, teams like teams who perceive themselves as a QB away, like the Niners, and even, even the Dolphins, you know, now that the Big Bad Patriots are pretty much, they just have to battle the Bills now. But can you imagine twice a year seeing Deshaun Watson and Josh Allen playing against each other? Oh. It, it, it would, TV would love that. How long has it been since, since Buffalo, Miami was like a marquee matchup? Like a late game. Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night. Miami, Buffalo, Miami. A few years ago, that game is like buried. That game is buried. That's not getting a primetime matchup. Ricky Massetti saying 1991 was probably early 90s was probably the last time was the last time uh, Buffalo Miami got people fired up 30 years ago says Robert yeah oh man now I want now I want I guess Deshaun Watson and the Niners would be cool too Russell Wilson versus versus Deshaun Watson Kyler Murray versus Deshaun Watson I mean that's that's fun too But yeah, but but Buffalo and Miami would if, if Miami got to Sean Watson, they would definitely be competing for the division every year for the next X amount of years. So a couple uh, couple quarterbacks like Josh Allen and I mean they're not they're not their age gap is not too different, right? Deshaun Watson is twenty seventeen. Josh Allen twenty eighteen? Twenty nineteen? not that much difference so they're 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 you can still consider them two young quarterbacks to see them in the next for the next 10 years battling each other twice a year would be pretty exciting it's a lot a lot of primetime games for that Right, and Miami, Robert was saying earlier, Miami's like, right, the environment that he's looking for organization-wise within the team, right, the head coaching staff, the GMs and everything. And, and yeah, I mean, you know, which, which, is a, which is something that I think would be a big deal for Deshaun Watson. Right, and trading back Houston, that's true, right, trading back Houston picks too. Lamar Jackson hollow right here. And an AJ Dillon rated rookie hollow <clears throat> for the Packers, Sean. Is is there any is there actually any smoke to this fire? Like are they Is this are we just at speculation level on this, Robert? Sounds like you're a Dolphins fan, right? Is, it, is this just speculation? Talking heads just just connecting dots or is there actual are there actually phone calls going back and forth? I mean, I guess we don't we don't know until someone reports that. But there's Jonathan Taylor for the Blue Horseshoes to 2.99, and here's two of them. We're talking about him. His ears are burning. John Deneen with the Dolphins. Ooh. 
Oh, from downtown. Who's Jerry Rice? Gotcha. Oh, you're a player. Gotcha, players fan. There's Jerry Rice. This is what downtown San Francisco looks like. There's just bars of gold laying around. Bats inside semi-abandoned mines. Right? An old prospector right here. Old, old prospector. Gus Chiggins. Peaches. That goes to the Niners. David Rodriguez going downtown. Le'Veon Bell, lime green. Little color match there. Ooh. Vegas trying to crawl back here? It's all speculation right now. Right. And guys, yeah, Houston's like, nah, we're not doing it. Ooh, and a Patrick Mahomes to 299. Patty Mahomes going to Matt Lieber and the Chiefs. And a Joe Burrow autograph. Joey B. Sean Maddock, wake up. Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Burrow, rated rookie, autograph, blue. 43 out of 75. Get well soon, Joey B. Get well soon. A lot of times he's a redemption, so I guess he signed some cards. There's Logan Wilson, Pink Velocity. Jason Huntley to 125 and Michael Pittman Jr. Jason Huntley to 125. Logan Wilson, Pink Velocity, also for Sean to 79. There he is. There's Sean. Wow, he says. I guess I'm so used to seeing him as a redemption, Sean, that I guess I wasn't, I definitely was not expecting, I was, I was expecting to flip this around and be like, like one of the, the inserts that they flip around. So that's that caught me off guard. Right on the card too. All right, we're halfway through this half case break. We've got about another 15 minutes to go. Oh, I'm kind of cruising, flying through this break. Nice. Sorry, I'm going a little bit more quickly than I usually would <laughs> towards the end of my my evening, end of my week. So it's already already got late really fast. Yeah, Sean was caught off guard as well. You're welcome. Yeah, usually I'm looking for redemptions for Joe Burrow. Maybe he signed. Maybe his base autographs could be redemptions. Maybe he signed parallels. That's possible. So that, that happens frequently in the hobby where someone will get like the parallels sent in, but then they don't do the base. I imagine it's a big stack of cards. You know, you know the hobby has arrived when someday we're going to, I feel like we're going to see this someday. That someday there is going to be, this sounds like a baseball player injury too. Where like a baseball player has like a, a strained thumb. And the reason will be because he was autographing cards for like a Panini or Top Set or something like that. We're going to see that someday. That's when you know the hobby has arrived. Truly arrived. It'll be pretty funny. Lynn Bowden Jr., 52 out of 79, pink velocity. Xavier McKinney for the Giants, 12 out of 25. Nice black parallel and autograph for the Giants. Taylor with the New York football Giants. <laughs> Xavier McKinney questionable today with a strained thumb. Apparently he was signing too many trading cards Harrison Bryant to 179 for the Browns 
Cleveland. This is for you. Jalen Ragor, rated rookie, hollow. For the Fly Eagles Fly, Matthew Shira. Devin Asiasi to 299. Patriots, Karen. Jordan Love, base rated rookie for the Packers, Sean. There's Chase Claypool, nice, to 125. Rated rookie. His emergence, I think, will, will probably convince the Steelers to not re-sign Juju Smith-Schuster. So where does Juju go? What are they going to do with Big Ben? There's Russell Wilson to 299. It's for Seattle. That'll be for Chris. Do they restructure Ben? Or do they do something more drastic? There's Tyler Boyd to 179. Another bangle. Bengal. Two more to go. We know what the Bengals need to do. It's just, just first first five picks, offensive line. <laughs> Free agents, offensive line. Trades, offensive line. Protect Joe Burrow. Hmm, that's interesting, Mark David. Juju Smith-Schuster goes to the Eagles. They need a receiver. They do need a receiver. I think they released Deshaun Jackson, right? I love Deshaun Jackson, but but I think injuries kind of caught up with him. I don't think he was barely on the field. But would love to give Jalen Hurts some weapons, right? And they they got a and I'm sure the new coaching staff will they'll use they'll use Miles Sanders. They'll deploy him better, I hope. And so if you can get that, you still got Zach Ertz. Juju Smith-Schuster, that could be very interesting. That's not a bad play. Big Ben needs to retire and let Pittsburgh rebuild. Yeah. I feel like Eagles offensive line is still okay. You know, I mean, maybe, I mean, every team could just kind of tweak the offensive line, get some depth here and there, and blah, 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 blah. You know, and just had just had an inordinate amount of injuries for the for the Eagles on an offensive line. So you got to think if they're even half of what they were last year, that's still a better offensive line that that had when sacked like dozens and dozens of times. So and Hearts can move a little bit better too. So with that, some Juju Smith Schuster, some Miles Sanders, some Zach Ertz, safety valve. Right, you know Zach Ertz still could be key playmaker too. Still be a number one. Gives uh, Juju Smith-Schuster more room to operate because Zach Ertz is still a threat. I'm seeing it all add up. There's Michael P. Ryan, red to 99. And then maybe uh, then there's Ross Blacklock for the Texans Coppola with that one. And if they find like a second, third round receiver that they just kind of develop... Oh, there's. Could be interesting. David Montgomery to 199. I, I I was surprised though at just how quickly the relationship between Wentz and and Peters, Doug Peterson, and the Eagle, like how that whole relationship for all three just disintegrated, just dis so quickly. There he is, right here. That's a little bit of a surprise to me. There's George Kittle. You know, but it got to a point where just maybe everyone just needed a change of scenery. It went south quick. Yeah. Hey, we got a lot of Eagles fans here, so we end up talking a lot of Eagles football here. Jason Jaspi. Nick Jaspi, his dad, the boss man, all all big Eagles fans. So they get talked about a lot here at the shop. It's Brandon Ayuk to 199. But you got to admit that the Eagles front office just kind of 
They, they did Chip Kelly, and then that kind of went south quick. I think they kind of just got lightning in a bottle with with Frank Reich and Doug Peterson, and they lucked out with Nick Foles just being a stud in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl. You know? So maybe there was a little bit of a... Maybe because of the Super Bowl, there was like a leash, a longer leash, and no one really thought... Like really, the the bigger problems may be some front office. Like the front office has to kind of look at themselves too. I think, right? Because you Chip Kelly didn't work out, right? The next one, Doug Peterson. You got a Super Bowl, but y- y- you know. But I think that just kind of papered over the what the real problems were. So the front office really needs to make sure whoever who's a new coach again kind of some kind of a, not a huge sexy name I think but but you got to hope that this coach can kind of stick around for like 5 to 7 seasons <laughs> you know wouldn't that be nice instead of uh, maybe catching lightning in a bottle and then looking great in the playoffs and then another like Five years of just agony, and then maybe a little more consistency in that Philadelphia organization. Let this coach, you know, let's develop some players. Let's let this coach marinate a little bit. Let's keep those expectations in check. You know, who was who was the guy? I keep forgetting the guy that that was that like said that this team was going to go to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl. But last box, folks. I think that's what the Eagles need. They they may, maybe want to with this coaching hire. Let's like let's keep you know. And if they, if they don't like Jalen Hurts within a year or two, like just rip the band aid. Like just give put the coach in the best position to succeed. Even if it takes a few years, maybe even if it means stepping a couple steps back, if you know you can take three or four steps forward. Chip Kelly's at UCLA now. For those of you, I mean, I know UCLA is not exactly a football powerhouse, but I think it's a good spot for Chip Kelly because basically UCLA is just saying, because Chip Kelly really does need to, I think, have... He's good in a college program where he can be a little underrated. He can do some goofy things, like, you know, some non-conventional things. There's Aaron Donald. And then develop a program like he did in Oregon, right? But he needs, like, some years to to get that, players that he wants, so on and so forth. Which was something that didn't really work out in his head coaching, other head coaching positions whether he wasn't effective quickly enough or maybe the ownership front office lost patience or whatever the case may be. But I think he's in a good spot at UCLA. They've had some interesting games. And I think he can build a pretty competitive program. And he's kind of under the radar. UCLA doesn't care that much about football. I mean, they do, but... You know, it's more of a basketball school. It's Tyler Boyd. It's Tom Brady. Here's Anthony McFarland to 25. Cole McDonald had a farm. That's our last autograph. E I E I O. Sean Maddock with the Titans. Unless there's a bonus autograph hiding in there. All right. Will Fuller to 125. Josh Allen. There he is to 299 for Buffalo. Jake Fromm, his backup. And there you have it. Chris with the Bills has the Jake Fromm. Hollow, the Josh Allen Blue, and the Will Fuller as well. And there you go, boys and girls. 
Pretty nice break. Let's give away some money. And then in a separate video, we'll give away even more money. If you uh, bought at least two teams, you'll have an entry. So basically, if you bought an even number of teams, you'll get one. Uh, half of that will be an entry for break credit. So Chris, you bought five, but four really count for the purposes of the promo. So there is two. All right, Mark. Thanks for hanging out with me, man. Have a great night, too. Capola, you have six, so that's three entries. Karen, two, that's an entry. Mark, two, that's an entry. Miguel, two, that's an entry. Sean, with five, four count for the purpose of the promo, still two entries. And Taylor, with an entry. So let's see if, I just wanna just kinda eyeball this really quick, make sure I got everybody. All right, excellent. All right, so there's 11 people right here. And how much break credit are we giving away? Top five. So almost half. Top five wins 50 bucks each. That's not bad. Top five after seven. Good luck. One, two, three, four. And seventh and final time after seven, it's Chris. Two Capolas, Miguel, and another Capola. Wow. Three break credit uh, codes for iCapola. I'll send them all in one. Chris and Miguel, you'll get break credit as well. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 50 bucks each. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting into the action. And I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.